Yes, please. Okay, at first, thanks a lot for an inv invitation to make a talk here. And uh, the subject of my talk um, uh, doesn't uh, relate it with previous talks, but uh, there is some connection. I shall discuss the search for light dark matter accelerators and uh, a special attention will be paid to NA64 experiment physicists from uh, IHEP. Uh, I have to mention that physicists from IHEP participate in this experiment. Uh, okay. So as uh, related references are contained in these um, papers, because uh, I have to mention uh, this reference because uh, my quotations uh, during the talk will be minimal. So there are three, three lines of research in experimental elementary particle physics. The first one is high energy. Uh, search for new massive particles, it's CMS and DATLAS mainly at CERN. Uh, the second line is uh, the search for uh, at relatively low energies, mainly the search for new uh, relatively light uh, with the mass around several GV new particles with small coupling constant. And the third one is classical one is the measurements with better accuracy. Typical examples are the measurement of muon anomalous magnetic and electron magnetic moments. And in this plot, uh, uh, this uh, uh, region corresponds to LHC region, to CMS and DATLAS. It's uh, the main characteristics here are big energies and relatively big coupling constants. The, uh, I shall discuss in this talk mainly the new result in Anton City Frontier, uh, relatively, relatively small energies and um, rather small coupling constants. And uh, I shall discuss uh, the search for scalar part, uh, scalar, so called scalar portals, is uh, exon and flantons, flavors. There are a lot of uh, particles which theorists invented. Neutrino portal, uh, it's um, mainly neutral lepton sterile neutrino, as an example. Um, and uh, vector portal, it's a, a so called light dark vector boson or light um, spin one uh, Z bosons also gravitino, of course. Uh, the main motivation, it's well known to everybody that the main motivation in favor of the existence of BSM physics is dark matter. Also, I have to mention uh, other hints like G minus two muon anomaly and by semi-leptonic decays. So we know that dark matter exists and it's called non-relativistic or warm. But we don't know spin of dark matter particles, mass of dark matter particles. Uh, in SUSE, with air parity, up to now, this model was the most popular. The gay gene with uh, spin one half and mass around 100 GV um, was considered as a first candidate to the role of dark matter, but due to non-observation of uh, supersymmetry at, uh, at CMS and Atlas, this uh, model now is not very popular. Um, so in this plot, um, uh, several possibilities are presented. So WIMP, it's uh, supersymmetry, ultralight dark matter, it's mainly QCD, it's mainly axion, also, um, it could be a vector boson. And also, there exists a region between, roughly speaking, 1 MeV and 1 GV, where uh, it's possible to have uh, models with dark matter. And in my talk, I shall discuss mainly this region. So, as I mentioned before, dark matter is non-relativistic or warm. 
and from Planck experiment um, data s wave annihilation is excluded for dark matter masses with uh, less than what, 10 GV. However, it is possible that dark matter particles are relatively light with mass around 1 GV or less. Its uh, pioneer work was due to Bohem and Fayer, and they avoided the so-called Weinberg theorem. According to this theorem, dark matter particles have to be, have uh, must have masses uh, bigger than uh, 10 GV. And um, the idea is that you uh, introduce new uh, interaction between our part, our work and dark matter work. And it's possible using this um, by the introduction of this um, new interaction to avoid this Lee Weinberg theorem. And the most popular scenario is there are a lot of models now. And the most popular scenario is the model with vector messenger, so-called dark photon. It's due to hold them and open. Also, um, models with scalar mediator exists, and uh, there are a lot of models. Okay, the main idea is the following. Uh, the philosophy is the following. We have standard work, standard model, our work. We have some dark sector. And uh, due to the mixing of our photon and um, dark photon, uh, there is some connection between uh, our work and dark sector. So the simplest Lagrangian is the following one. So in dark sector, it is assumed that there exists uh, abelian gauge field um, analog of photon, but with some mass. And uh, due to this term, it's uh, the mixing of our our, uh, uh, our photon term and our field strands uh, for electromagnetic field, and this is field strands for dark photon. Due to this term, you have a non-trivial connection between our work and dark work, and um, as a result of this mixing, uh, we find that uh, dark photon, it's a new uh, massive vector field, massive vector boson. We assume that its mass not very big. Uh, we find that effective uh, interaction uh, with uh, our particles, for instance, with electrons, is proportional to um, let's see, a standard QED type and it's proportional to the mixing term. And uh, well, uh, in NA64 NA experiment, I shall dis uh, discuss the A prime Bramstralon production due to this reaction. Uh, also, um, uh, to detect uh, this dark photon, we must um, have some information on its decay. And uh, in the literature, people study both visible decays, in, say, for instance, in electron positron ion pair, patterns, or invisible, into uh, decays into dark matter particles. So, as I mentioned before, the most um, popular light dark matter model is um, Uvan gauge field model. And dark photon connects our world and dark matter world due to non-zero kinetic mixing. Also, I have to mention also that it's dark photon model. It's not unique model. There are a lot of models in particle. There are models with with B minus L interaction of light new vector boson Z prime and uh, so-called L mu minus L current um, interaction. Um, this model also dis uh, are rather often discussed. And uh, what about, uh, we don't know, uh, of course, the mass of uh, intermediate vector boson, but also we don't know the dark matter spin. There are models, people study several models, of course, um, uh, scalar dark matter, Majorana dark matter, pseudo dark matter, and 
Um, the results, uh, of course, depend on the assumption about spin of dark matter particles. But I have to stress that the main assumption which people often uh, assume uh, is that in the early universe, dark matter was in the equilibrium with observable matter at some temperature, dark matter decouples and um, refined uh, the observable um, dark matter density of uh, universe. And the main uh, idea is that observable dark matter density allows to predict the annihilation cross section. Um, here, for instance, uh, I consider as an example the, the Lagrangian of dark photo model is the sum of three terms, um, as I mentioned before. And for scalar uh, dark matter, it's a standard term of the Lagrangian. Of course, it's used, it's possible to use Higgs mechanism to create dark photon mass in a gauge invariant model. But people often uh, consider um, the simple model with so called Stuckelberg uh, photon, uh, Stuckelberg mechanism for photon. Creation. Uh huh. Okay. So, uh, okay. We assume that uh, in this talk, I shall assume that the earlier universe dark matter is in equilibrium with the standard matter. As a consequence, uh, today it's very important. Today, dark matter density tells us about annihilation cross section. Correct dark matter density corresponds to the average cross section times velocity around one people. Pick a bar. And uh, there are several mechanisms. Uh, uh, it's direct annihilation of uh, dark matter particles into, say, electron positive or muons, doesn't matter. It also exists secluded annihilation, but for dark photon models, secluded annihilation, uh, when um, uh, dark matter particles annihilate into dark photon, uh, bosons and they uh, decay into into standard model particles, say an electron positive. But for dark photon model, secluded annihilation is S wave, and uh, for light dark matter, it's excluded. So I shall discuss mainly direct annihilation. Uh, for scalar mediators, secluded annihilation is possible. Um, so dark matter, uh, the simplest dark matter model contain, uh, depends on four unknown parameters. The first one mixing, epsilon, fine coupling constant for dark sector, it's analog of uh, electromagnetic coupling constants, fine coupling constants, dark photon mass, dark matter mass. And if you use uh, thermal uh, origin condition, so annihilation is around one picobar. As a consequence, we find uh, that uh, we have uh, not four uh, unknown conditions, but due to this equation, we have three unknown conditions, namely epsilon squared times alpha d, it's some function of dark photon and uh, dark photon mass and uh, dark particle mass. Uh, here, uh, uh, how to technically uh, obtain the result that uh, sigma is around one picobar. You have to solve the Boltzmann equations, approximate uh, solutions exist, and um, people usually uh, use um, um, additional assumptions just uh, for simplicity, that uh, the mass of uh, dark photon is equal to three mass of dark matter particles. It's more or less uh, standard. Just to uh, it's you can uh, of course uh, obtain bound for any relation, but it's just to come compare different results. Okay, so we have this estimate for scalar dark matter particles and. Uh, 
similar estimate takes place for slightly wider factor. Uh, 25 uh, less for the prediction for the product of epsilon squared times alpha there. Uh, to obtain some bound on alpha there, uh, we used the uh, often used is the idea that um, the theory is applicable uh, up to the Landau pole scale. And uh, using the randomization group equation, we can predict the value alpha there. Uh, let me stress that alpha there, it means the effective, uh, in fact, it's effective coupling constant at the uh, scale of uh, dark photon mass. And uh, uh, estimates depend uh, on the scale lambda. For instance, for lambda equal one TV, we find this. Estimate and if we assume that um, the model uh, is applicable up to Planck scale, we have this esti estimate for coupling constant alpha there. It's, it's rather important. Okay, let me start for search, search for light dark matter at, at accelerators. And we have to know production modes and detection signature. Uh, production modes, uh, electron positron annihilation, search for uh, dark photon and uh, light dark matter in meson decays, the Leon and Brandstrahl and electron uh, nuclear collisions. Detection uh, signature, the use of pair resonance, beam dump, late decays, inclusive missing mass, and the reconstructed deplaced vertex. Uh, visible dec A prime decays, um, if uh, people mm, in many experiments, people look for this decays. And uh, there are two lines. The prompt decay, it's a reson decays, it's resonant behavior in invariant mass distribution and displaced decays uh, if a uh, uh, dark photon is relatively long lived, you can use displaced decays to uh, restrict the dark photon. Uh, the second uh, line of research is the use of um, invisible decays, the search for invisible decays. Um, there are several ways. Uh, the, one of the popular uh, is the missing momentum or energy um, distribution from um, dark photon into dark matter particles. And uh, also the uh, people use, to realize this idea, people use beam dump, uh, beam dump experiments, missing mass measurement, that's resonance di distribution. Uh, also uh, NA64 experiment, it uses missing energy measurement and LDMX, LDMX is future experiment is very, similar to NA64, it uh, will measure the momentum uh, me uh, uh, moment of, of outgoing electrons. And so geography of uh, light dark matter searches are very, uh, is very vast. So uh, NA64, for instance, is uh, at CERN. But uh, experiment Padme in Italy and uh, here in the USA uh, at Jefferson Laboratory, there are several experiments at Keck, at Bell 2, and so on and so on. Uh, what about visible decays? This is summary plot of the search for visible uh, dark photon decays in different experiments. It's uh, NA48 experiment is at CERN. It uses uh, pi zero decays to um, detect um, dark photon. And this is um, the exclusion plot in the red color. It's the exclusion plot of NA48 eight experiment. And uh, I have to mention that previously the 
idea of dark photon was rather popular because um, uh, it could explain uh, the so-called G minus two anomaly, but uh, the experiments uh, on visible decays here is uh, NA64 contribution on the blue color. Uh, it was uh, this uh, such as uh, very motivated by the fact that uh, dark photon could uh, explain the minus two anomaly, but uh, this uh, experiments closed this possibility. Okay, so I sh it's current experimental bounds. And uh, okay, so um, here I uh, made a list of experiment uh, in blue color. It's uh, current experiments, acting experiments, and in red colors, uh, future experiments. Not all uh, of these experiments are approved, unfortunately. Uh, uh, let's me start with this discussion of invisible decays. As I mentioned before, there are several ways to produce dark photon and uh, dark uh, matter. Uh, the first, uh, the classical way, beam dump. The second one that's missing mass measurement, the resonance uh, distribution. And the third and the fourth uh, ways is the use of uh, missing energy measurement or momentum measurement. Again, here is the list of experiments. Uh, a red color corresponds to future experiments and uh, uh, blue color corresponds to existing experiments. Uh, here is a recent situation with uh, the investigation of on the y x is the uh, value of epsilon here, and on uh, x x is uh, of this plot is the value of dark photon mass. And uh, you see, uh, I shall discuss uh, this later. Uh, again, I have to mention that. Uh, the the possibility that dark photon model could explain uh, the so-called G minus two anomaly um, was closed due to Babar experiment and NA64 experiments mainly. So this possibility is excluded, unfortunately. It's uh, the typical example of beam dam. It's for mini boon experiment. Uh, here I have to mention uh, the main fact is that um, the number of signal events is proportional to the force power of um, uh, mixing parameter epsilon. Therefore, to have uh, a reasonable number of event um, of events, signal events, you have a lot of. Uh, protons on the target, typical values 10 to the 21, 22. So it's, uh, uh, it's the main peculiarity of such beam dump approach. Another approach is uh, the, uh, it's, it's realized in NA64 experiment, current experiment, LDMAX, future experiment, you use this reaction and then you uh, don't measure the characteristic of uh, um, missing momentum particles. You measure imbalance in energy. Uh, therefore, uh, the discovery of imbalance of energy will allow you to um, conclude that um, you have uh, discovered the dark photon and dark model. It's very similar to the searches uh, of supersymmetry in uh, at uh, CMS and Atlas detectors, where the main signature is the imbalance in transverse energy. Because you can't uh, detect directly uh, supersymmetric particles, uh, neutral supersymmetric particles, at least because they don't interact uh, they interact with our matter rather weakly. So it's uh, very similar to the neutrino. You 
uh, measured the neutrino by imbalance of energy. Here, the same situation. Also, uh, uh, very interesting experiments uh, is so-called Padme experiments in Frascati. It uses this reaction, E plus E minus, produces our photon and duct photon. If you know the moment of positron, electron, and photon, you can uh, uh, restore uh, the mass of A prime, and uh, the knowledge of this moment allows to uh, use the so-called resonance distribution on invariant mass, and uh, using this resonance distribution will allow to discover this dark photon. So this is the picture, and this is some um, uh, this discovery regions for Padme experiment. Okay, let me uh, now consider the main goal of my talk, NA64 experiment. NA64 uh, searches both uh, invisible and, invi uh, and visible uh, dark photon decays. Uh, then uh, NA64 collaboration is uh, 63 researchers from 12 institutes. Uh, and I have to stress that uh, uh, physicists from IHEP contribute uh, rather strongly uh, uh, in this collaboration. And, it's very, and it is very good. OK, um, so the main reactions which I use uh, is uh, this reaction is uh, visible mode, so you produce uh, dark photon and you assume that it uh, decays into standard model particles, mainly in electron and positron. And here, this picture corresponds to um, uh, the production mechanism is uh, the same, but um, here you use um, uh, invisible decay. You assume that uh, a prime decays mainly invisible. Okay, so the program of uh, NA64 is uh, very vast. And here are some uh, key mm -hmm. references. So this is the scheme uh, of uh, our experiment. Uh, uh, initial electrons with energy from uh, secondary um, beam um, with uh, average energy around 100 GV uh, around to NA64 detector. And uh, it is assumed that in electromagnetic colorimeter, we have uh, the production of uh, some new particle like duck photon, and then uh, it uh, decays uh, in um, dark matter particles. Uh, 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 here, this is in red, uh, is a hadronic colorimeter. Uh, and uh, as a consequence, we have uh, three main components. Uh, the first one, uh, we have clean one energetic 100 uh, secondary electron beam. Uh, also in this uh, system, uh, we have electron tagging system. Uh, I have to stress, uh, I, have, it's, I have to mention that here we use uh, is, uh, this magnet and uh, we use synchrotron radiation, uh, we detect it, and synchrotron radiation of electron allows us to get rid, uh, to suppress um, uh, some uh, contamination of uh, pions and counts in electron beam and the, uh, to um, get rid of uh, electrons with um, uh, high and uh, too high and too small energies. Okay, so. Um, uh, the system of electromagnetic colorimeter and uh, hadron colorimeter color allows us um, to have a four, four pi, her, a so called fully hermetic system. 
And the main signature is the following. Here we have 100 GV electron track and uh, out of uh, after collisions, we have um, electromagnetic shower or electron with energy less than 550 GV, it's our uh, cut and uh, no energy in the VETA and hadronic color emitter. Uh, so it's, uh, we measure uh, the feature of um, signal events is uh, very strong imbalance uh, in energy. The sensitivity is uh, proportional to epsilon square, uh, unlike to uh, the case of beam dump. In beam dump, uh, it's uh, the number of signal events is proportional to the force power of epsilon. Therefore, we can use uh, uh, less number of uh, less statistics in comparison uh, with um, beam dump. For instance, in beam dump, the reasonable statistics starts with 10 to 20, 21 electrons. And here, um, starting statistics is 10 to the 11. So it's, a big, uh, it's the main difference. And this is the photo. Uh, this experiment is uh, situated, uh, it's um, in Previsan area, uh, in North area, it's there. Uh, okay, this is the photo. Uh, okay, so let me consider now the production um, invisible mode. So as I mentioned before, we use this reaction signature I also discussed this signature, it's imbalance in energy without uh, essential activity in, um, uh, in Ashkal. And uh, this is uh, the collection of uh, sources, uh, the collection of expected beams. Uh, I have to stress it's um, as the collection of, sorry, the collection of background. And uh, there are three types of background. Uh, the first one is due to beam contamination. So electron beam is not perfect. It uh, uh, also contains pi, uh, pions, counts, and counts, and uh, they could uh, react in the material and um, give, uh, uh, some background, also the detector backgrounds and physical backgrounds, uh, also due to this uh, some due to this process. For instance, electron Z, electron Z plus neutrino pair. You can of course distinguish this process with uh, process of dark photon production with uh, subsequent decay into dark matter, matter particles. We have made estimate the full background, uh, the share of the ground is less than to the minus 12. In fact, it's a background free experiment. And uh, on these plots, the distribution here on the y x, it's uh, the energy deposited in hadronic color emitter, and here the energy in electromagnetic color emitter. And this region corresponds to the signal region, small activity in Hadron color emitter and small uh, energy deposited in electromagnetic color emitter. And this is uh, our last results in terms of epsilon and um, uh, dark photon mass. So this, uh, this region, this region is excluded by X, our experiment. And uh, for comparison, this is Babar background. So uh, we are more powerful than Babar for um, Apram masses less than say 200 MeV. And it's our future, some projections, uh, our hopes uh, for future searches uh, when we increase <coughs> statistics by a factor 10 or 20. And uh, recently, uh, uh, we have used, uh, we have uh, obtained uh, uh, new results. Namely, we use, uh, we um, 
uh, took into account the production of uh, uh, electron positron pairs in this reaction. Plus, uh, we assumed uh, the, the um, we assumed uh, the uh, sorry we assumed that uh, positrons uh, uh, interact with electrons uh, and produce directly dark photon. And as a con uh, an account of this additional reaction uh, allows us uh, allowed us to improve uh, our bound ar uh, around uh, the value of uh, of a black photon mass around thirty mV. You see, it's uh, uh, we have factored ten improvement in epsilon uh, due to account of electron positron annihilation into dark photon in future we consider the possibility to use the secondary positron beam uh, the use of positron beam probably will help uh, improve uh, our results by a factor 10 like between 5 and 10 probably so it's uh, uh, our last result very interesting you see the of course, it's very um, narrow region in on dark photon mass, but nevertheless, it's uh, you see it. Uh, the progress is uh, by factor, say five seven, in comparison with previous results. And here is the result of uh, our, our results would be translated on the plot here. People use uh, usually this variable. To compare different models, it's uh, the product of epsilon square times alpha there times the ratio of uh, mass um, of dark particles to photon dark photon mass to the power of four, and these lines and uh, on x uh, axis uh, the mass of dark photon. It's here. Is uh, sorry. It's, the mass of uh, dark particle. And this is uh, black lines corresponds to different models. This is uh, scalar model, scalar dark matter, Majorana dark matter, and this is so-called pseudo dark matter. And you use, this is NA64 results, including our last result, which is excludes this region plus uh, the results of other experiments it's uh, it's for different uh, coupling constants alpha dates for point one alpha the point five it's uh, of course not very realistic but nevertheless and we also we can um, present our experimental results in terms of bound on alpha there. And uh, you see for, uh, it's, uh, uh, I collected NA64 results and uh, the results of other experiments is L LSMD. And this, um, uh, we uh, bound uh, coupling constant less uh, than under this curve are excluded. <coughs> okay. So also, uh, it's very interesting to note that um, we used NA64 to restrict um, the model with Z prime boson in uh, B minus L scenario. So people often um, uh, consider the model uh, where Z prime boson interact with B minus L current. And uh, we used uh, again this reaction when, and assumed that that's, that prime decays into a neutrino pair. And uh, using this reaction, we could um, uh, restrict its uh, to obtain more powerful bounds at present in comparison with our other neutrino experiments. It's very interesting. And then very untrivial, by the way. So it's this is our bound curve. We excluded this region. Okay, so our current situation concerning invisible uh, decays. 
Uh, in October electron run, um, we have full statistics for all years 9, 10 to the 11. Uh, previous uh, results uh, were published uh, using the statistics three, roughly speaking, three times 10 to the 11. Now we have uh, increase uh, of statistics by a factor of three. And uh, I hope uh, next spring uh, the results based on these statistics uh, will be published and plans for uh, next years to have full statistics, at least uh, between uh, three and five, 10 to the 12 electrons on target. Also, I have to mention our um, searches uh, of uh, on visible mode. Uh, uh, this results um, was uh, became rather actual uh, due to the so-called Atomki experiment. This uh, nuclear experiment has reported the observation at 6.8 sigma level, the excess of events in the invariant mass distribution of A plus and minus pairs produced in the nuclear transitions. And the people concluded that this anomaly can be associated with uh, vector, vector or probably scalar X boson with the mass of uh, around 16.7 mV. And uh, we, uh, we used this scheme to uh, with displaced vertices uh, to study um, this process. So we assume that uh, X boson is uh, Produced due, uh, during elect, uh, as a result of electron production, and then it decays into electron positron pairs. This is the prediction of the uh, model uh, of atom uh, of this model with atom key experiment. This is prediction. You see, we excluded, uh, say, 80% of uh, possible uh, allowed regions of atom key experiments, except. Uh, this narrow line. And th uh, this line, uh, this uh, plot corresponds to the vector model mo model of X boson. And uh, this plot also we studied uh, the investigation uh, in order to exclude this or find something unusual uh, for the model with scalar X boson. And this is uh, our result. Also, um, uh, I have to mention that um, we uh, used an A64 to look for axion-like um, states. So benchmark models for axion-like states is uh, the uh, Lagrangian of this type. You have the pseudo-scalar particles, which interacts uh, due to non and liable uh, interaction with uh, the product of F to F dual. Uh, that's uh, some kind of, uh, some generalization of the axion model. Axion models predict the existence of uh, such interaction at uh, one loop level. Uh, we used Primakov uh, reaction to produce um, axion-like state here, gamma Bernstrahlen is a um, uh, secondary photon from uh, the interaction of electron, of initial electron with uh, matter. And uh, as a detection of uh, A, uh, we used the signature of uh, when R uh, um, in, uh, decays into two photons. Uh, in principle, we also used visible and invisible modes. The, the, the typical decay width is given by this formula. And the typical decay length is, is here, is written here, it's well known. Uh, so we used, uh, as I mentioned before, we used this reaction. So uh, photon, secondary photon produces um, uh, exon like particles, and uh, after it, de it decays into two photons. And uh, so our signature, no signal in VET and the first model Southern color emitter and visible decay into two photons in the second and third 
parts of uh, models of Hadron color emitters. And uh, here the I have less than five minutes. Less than five minutes. Okay, I shall try. So we have this uh, result, uh, and we can uh, uh, test new region in comparison with uh, other experiments. Of course, if uh, uh, I have only less than five minutes, I shall discuss uh, very briefly the MUON program uh, and uh, start to make conclusions. So uh, several years ago, we proposed to use MUON boom, MUON beam to look for um, dark photon and uh, other uh, massive um, uh, bosons. Uh, sorry. And uh, uh, we have uh, the, this idea was realized two years ago. Uh, at, at present, we have uh, full statistics, roughly speaking, after two runs, uh, we have statistics five times 10 to the 10 uh, muons on target and future plan to have statistics at least five, uh, to increase statistics by two, uh, two orders of magnitudes. Here, the main reaction, uh, we used the secondary muon beam from SPS uh, with the scenario energy around 160 GV. It's the scheme of experiments. It's in some sense, it's very similar uh, to the previous uh, <clears throat> uh, scheme when uh, we um, studied the uh, electron uh, duct photon production for uh, electron beam here, uh, the main difference is that we use the muon beam, but the signature is very simple. Um, again, we, uh, we are looking for imbalance in energy. Uh, and uh, the, one of the motivation uh, at present, the model with L mu minus L tau current is rather popular. And the interaction with uh, it, uh, this new hypothetical Z boson interacts on the only with uh, leptons of the second and third generation, and uh, the single possibility to test this my idea at accelerators is the use of muon beams. Okay, so this is uh, the uh, uh, previous bounce from. Um, Babar experiments, uh, it used this production electron positron uh, produces uh, mu plus mu minus plus this new Z boson, uh, which decays into muon pair. And uh, using this reaction, you can restrict the parameters of this model. And this is uh, our um, expectation for our experiments. It's for in terms of coupling constants is for scalar models, for vector model. And uh, uh, I have to say that uh, uh, one of the reasons which uh, why this model is uh, rather popular up to now is that in principle, it could it can explain the um, muons G minus two anomaly and uh, dark matter. And here is uh, this curve correspond to the uh, G minus two anomaly. And uh, this is uh, our discovery expectations for our experiment. Um, okay, let me conclude. Uh, light dark matter is a good alternative to supersymmetry and other dark matter models like axion, sterile neutrino, and so on and so on. Uh, dark photon model is the simplest realization Dark photon model predicts mixing very interesting uh, from the point of experimental search. And uh, NA64 with future statistics around 5, 10 to the 12 uh, electrons on target will be able to test uh, the most interesting models. 
And the uh, muon version of NI64 has good perspectives to test uh, L mu minus L tau model. Thank you. Thank you very much for this very comprehensive review. Uh, we have time uh, only for a single question from the audience. Yes, please. Uh, how do you distinguish uh, muons from pions in this uh, uh, last case of your experiment with the muon beams? Apparently, they produce both. You know, in, in, in this beam, you have both muons and pions. Maybe pions at the level of 10 to minus 2, but still. I. Uh... Mm. Uh, muons, uh, you mean in, in beam? Yes, yes, there should be some uh, small fraction of pions. And pions apparently yes, will yes, produce uh, some kind of uh, these signatures, missing energies. Uh, uh, pion, and uh, in the case of pion, you have, uh, suppose you have. Uh, Pion uh, interacting in a call as I, I'm not an experiment. Uh, and in this case, you have uh, uh, you, you have, say, pion uh, elastic or non elastic um, reaction. In this case, you, you don't have imbalance. Uh, you see, the point is that uh, suppose you have a reaction pion. No clone, uh, it produces some three pions plus no clone. You, uh, you detect um, pions in the cal and dash cal, and you find that there is no imbalance. So you see, our uh, to have signal events, we have to uh, have a very huge imbalance in energy. We have, yeah, but uh, you, but with pions you can produce pions which can decay into uh, say muon and neutrinos or something like that, and neutrino can go away with a huge amount of energy. Yes, uh, uh, as I understand, we took into account uh, this uh, uh, these possibilities, and the um, background is not very big. I I I, I refer you to our papers but i think uh, uh the share of such backgrounds you see you, even in this case you must have very huge missing uh, energy and uh, we use the cut that the uh, missing energy for 160 uh, initial muon is uh, bigger than 80 GV. And these reactions you mentioned with the decay of pion, uh, they uh, don't use such uh, signature. So I agree with you that uh, this background is possible, but it's not very big. As I, just, I don't remember, honestly speaking, but uh i guess it's uh, less than 10 to the minus nine something like this uh, okay but, uh, <coughs> that means that you can also use the pion beams to perform similar type of experiments i mean you you used uh, electron beams muon beams maybe pion beams as well yes pion beams we uh, we plan to you uh, to do uh, to use this pion beams there it's in particular, we plan to use some exotics to uh, uh, study some exotics like um, invisible count decay, count decays, and et cetera, et cetera. But to my mind, um, at present, the most perspective, um, uh, I guess, is the use of the positron beam, uh, because uh, I mentioned that the use even of uh, the an account of even secondary positron from reaction allow, allows to uh, increase uh, the discovery plot uh, by factor five and ten in, in some rare regions. So uh, we plan uh, in future 
to use. Uh, it's to my mind, it's the most interesting possibility is uh, to use the positron beam. Uh, in this case, I guess. Uh, it, but you, to, thank you. There are some technical problems with it. I don't want to discuss it. So thank in, you, in principle, we plan, but. Uh, Thank you very much for the answer. Well, we are severely behind the schedule. Uh, let's proceed uh, to the I next have topic. a technical question to organizers. The problem is that I have intersection with my chair meeting, which starts now. But I can return back uh, for discussion if it is uh, necessary. Well, sure. Uh, the discussion time will be slightly shifted, I guess, given the... I think uh, strongly uh, shifted. <laughs> well, this depends on the definition. Uh, now we have to proceed to the next talk.